Valve Software was founded in 1996 by Gabe Newell, who currently resides as sole owner and CEO of the company. Valve has remained since inception a flat organisation. This means that there are no managers or superiors in the company. Gabe remains the figurehead for the company and makes long-term strategic decisions, however chooses to have no say in project decisions or short-term planning. The flat hierarchy approach of organisation structure is said to have many benefits, things such as reduced cost of managers, ability to become more adaptive in changing climates, and the freedom of innovation for employees. However, this difference of structure is not for all. Companies like Google have tried and failed to flatten their hierarchy with aims to improve efficiency. Problems arise with any structural choice, and in order to get the benefits, companies like Valve have to manage these problems. The problems with a flat structure can interrelate with each other. These problems fall under the five main categories. Organising, the ability to organise a workforce and the lack of support structure for employees. Planning, the mismatch between short-term goals and long-term interests. Human resources, lack of formal mentoring and training, no formal hiring process and the issues of finding suitable employees. Control, the ability to organise a workforce leads to a lack of control over projects, leadership, retention of employees, employees' egos, and an imbalance in personality types. Leadership paves the way for the team. The leader will set the tasks and give their vision and direction for the project. Valve Software has leaders, though not through assignment by someone higher up in the organisation. This is where leadership within teams becomes a major problem. The team leaders in each project are decidedly left up to the person or people who feel as though they'd like to take on that role. This leads to problems with project group structures and social dynamics within the team. Problem number one with leadership is the differences between different personality types. Valve's own employee handbook states that they are looking for innovators, engineers, people who are self-motivated to join them in pioneering the future. Extrinsically motivated people are typically the best workers, the best innovators, due to their easy influence and reliability. They're generally not set in their ways. Intrinsically motivated people, however, find self-motivation easy due to their way of working, having less influence from outside sources. Self-motivated people are more commonly intrinsic meaning they'll work for themselves and want to do it their own way. A balanced organisational structure will generally put these intrinsic people into leadership roles. The point is, if everyone is their own manager, taking suggestion and influence from peers becomes implicitly harder when there isn't someone higher up in command. Another problem arises when people form their own cliques. According to an interview with Jerry Ellsworth, an ex-Valve employee, people were set in their ways and would form their own groups similar to those found in high school. People will form their own set of leadership hierarchies within their teams, making it hard for others to join in. If an employee is outed by their project group, it could easily lead to an unfair stack ranking and a lower salary. As a good organisational hierarchy will show, teamwork will typically work best with a balance among roles and responsibilities. Not everyone in a team can be top dog. Given a room full of leaders with opportunity to be in control, this can lead to some interesting imbalances in power and persuasion. Ego becomes the third problem in keeping order. Challenging creative ideas can be a good thing. Having two or more people who feel like they'd like to take a project in separate directions will always lead to compromise and a bit of taste in the undermined employee's mouth. A set chain of command implicitly sets people in their place and keeps everyone focused on the task at hand. The 
The ability to organise a workforce is one of the most important functions of management. You need to make or break a company. In a hierarchical organisation, workers are assigned jobs and expectations. This structures workload and provides organisations with control. If a, if a project needs to be completed to achieve a particular outcome, workers are assigned to do it. Valve's hierarchy and choice of policies reduce the type of organisational control. One of the major problems with flat hierarchies is that there is no support structure for the employees to rely on for answers. There are delegated responsibilities and tasks with expectations that they will complete them. As there are no superiors involved in the projects at Valve, employees are reliant on team members and themselves to innovate with expectations that they will monitor and manage themselves. As there are no superiors involved in the projects at Valve, employees are reliant on team members and themselves to innovate with the expectations that they will monitor and manage their own progress. Worker empowerment within Valve allows for employees to choose what to work on. If at any moment they leave, it will present problems for Valve's ability to organise its workforce, translating these problems into a lack of control. Projects that are not desirable to employees, but necessary for goals, are likely to be completed. This creates problems for project timelines. Furthermore, the inability to organise job selection can create issues between short-term and long-term goals. There are three problems that have been identified with the human resource management that takes place within Valve. This being, there is no formal hiring process, no formal training program, and no formalised mentors. At Valve Software, there is no specific recruitment process or hiring department. Instead, employees decide who they would like to hire for the company and why, resulting in many friends of employees being hired to work for Valve. Therefore, there is no skill testing, formal interviews or application forms for people that want to work for Valve, thus resulting in a high possible staff turnover for Valve as they are unaware whether the people they are hiring will be able to cope with the amount of work expected of them. Valve does not have a formal training program for new or existing employees. When staff are employed for Valve, they are expected to be able to complete any task confidently but specialise in one specific field of work. However, if an employee is having trouble with one specific field of work within Valve, there is no possible way for them to learn efficiently as there is no on or off the job training program within the company, which may result in the products produced by Valve not being produced as well as they could be due to employees lacking the ability to perform certain skills as there is no formal training program available to them. Valve admits that there is no formalised mentoring aspect of the company and admits that this is one of the areas of weaknesses. This being caused by the flat hierarchical structure of having no managers. Therefore, there is no one for employees to go to other than their fellow colleagues if they are having trouble with the job. This forces employees to go searching for someone that can help them rather than knowing who to go to and being able to continue their work quickly. Valve has a vision, but because of the lack of leadership power, it can be difficult to turn vision into reality. Leadership power is to influence and control others for the good of the group or the whole organisation, and not to be used to control personal satisfaction. There are a number of theories surrounding leadership within a flat organisation that can inspire effort by building enthusiasm, communicate your strategy's vision, and maintain organisational momentum. Flat organisation structures poses both provisional and personal powers. Residual powers, which is reward and conservative power. Reward power is the incentive to employees. Conservative power is to hold back positive outcomes to a way to influence others. And personal power is which is expert power and referent power. Expert power creates work teams with people willing to learn off each other's with specialised knowledge. Referent power has desired effects on other employees to identify personnel. Referent power has desired effects on other employees to identify personally with them. 
Empowerment within the organisation has a huge part. With people feeling empowered, they act. They would tend to follow through with what the commitments and high quality work. High performance organisations are masters of mobilising power and the commitment to the vision of other employees. High performance organisations are masters of mobilising power and commitment to the vision of all employees. Empowerment can provide people with reasonability and accountability in which allows people to act independently. Organising is a process of assigning tasks, allocating resources and arranging activities to implement plans and accomplish goals. It is a key element to organisational success and a key function of management. Some of the relevant theories for this case study include adaptive organisational design, organic designs and project teams. Valve follows the adaptive organisational design theory as it is organic and horizontal compared to other traditional structured companies. The company has rejected forms of chains of command for a flat hierarchy structure. This em emphasises on functional teams and encourages contribu contribution from all employees. Valve is a decentralised organisation with fewer rules and procedures. The company has open divisions of labour and no levels between staff. This promotes wider spans of control and also more personal co coordination between staff. Project teams are teams that are brought together for a particular task or project. This team is disbanded once it has been completed and satisfied the objective. Valve has adopted the idea as employees pick projects they want to complete team up with other staff members and complete and accomplish goals before they disband and find another project to work on. There are two management theories directly related to human resource management relating to Valve software, this being diversity management and work-life balance. Diversity management involves identifying and managing those employee characteristics likely to have a significant impact on the organisation's ability to achieve its strategic objectives. Valve utilises diversity management when looking for people to recruit, based on the T-shaped structure of people they look for. These people must have a broad range of skills with one particular strength that Valve looks for to achieve its strategic objectives. Work-life balance involves balancing career demands and personal and family needs. Valve manages the work-life balance of their employees efficiently as the employees aren't told what hours they need to work due to the flat structure hierarchical system Valve bases its company on. Therefore, employees can decide to leave work as they please, balancing the work-life balance to their needs. However, even though the employees are gifted with this luxury, they do not exploit the freedom as the compensation for completed projects are based on a stack racking system, which essentially means the more input into the production of a finished product, the more you get compensated. Our objective for leadership involves decreasing internal conflicts between employees over the next year by developing a set of policies and changes to guide a positive cultural shift. As you can see, the tasks we have set to achieve the outcomes include the introduction of a probationary period for all new staff, the development of an organisational wide ethics training program and ethics promotion, and an organisational wide structure reform if it comes to it. The introduction of a probationary period will allow team members to internally screen new staff members, which can also help out HR. This policy should be developed by a small internal team and shouldn't take any more than three months to implement and test. Over the next three to six months, we should focus on developing an organisational wide ethics training program for all staff to complete. This will attempt to change staff attitudes towards each other and newer staff members, and also help bring a greater level of tolerance between social groups. If there is an underwhelming amount of social improvement, 
We will work towards a reform in organisational structure over the next year. This will involve the addition of assigned project managers to help bridge communication barriers and enforce acceptable behaviours between staff. Our objective for organising is to restore the alignment between short-term projects and long-term interests by creating a team to control over internal objectives within the next three years. The tasks that have been set in place to achieve this objective includes ensuring long-term goals that are clearly advertised and agreed by all staff members, incentives for the completion of undesirable short-term projects, the creation of a project team to guide organisational resources. To help employees understand the aims of the company, we will ensure that goals are clearly advertised to staff. This helps to reduce confusion between staff members and set a clear objective for employees to work towards. This should take less than three months to implement. Some projects may be undesirable for employees to work on, but they may be necessary for the company to move forward. Incentives will be put in place to help with the completion of these projects. This medium range plan will be reviewed annually by chosen skilled staff members and measured by increases in completed projects. Plans to guide organisational resources through a creation of project team will be implemented within a three year period. This is a long term goal that will be allocated to 15 staff members. This will help to align short term projects with long term interests of the company by monitoring how resources are being allocated within Valve. An objective Valve should seek to complete in order to improve the human resource management aspect of the company is to have mentoring and educational resources in place to better educate employees within the next year. In the short term, Valve should develop policies and procedures to better introduce new employees to the company and the work environment of Valve through the use of two to five senior staff members directing this change. It will be evident that this short-term plan has been successful if policies and procedures are in place and followed by the staff within three months. In the medium term, Valve should develop a mentorship program to be performed by around five to ten senior employees of Valve who can volunteer their time to help this medium-term plan In the medium term, Valve should develop a mentorship program to be performed by around about 5 to 10 senior employees of Valve who can volunteer their time to help educate employees. It will be clear whether or not this medium term plan has been successful if this program is available to help guide employees within about 3 to 6 months time. In the long term, Valve should look to outsource a human resource team to attract and screen new employees that would be appropriate for the jobs required of them at Valve. Evidence of this long-term plan being successful will be having new employees successfully integrated into Valve that have been hired by the outsourced human resource firm within a year.